Okay, finally, Gantt charts. Uh, Gantt is somebody's name. It's not an acronym. Henry Gantt, uh, he, he worked with Frederick Taylor, a big industrialization uh, workflow person. He improved productivity um, in naval shipyards in America. That's where he made his name. Five stages to prepare a Gantt chart. Set some sort of time scale. Add the activities which come from your work breakdown structure. Add the durations of the activities. Add the dependencies. Create the chart. So let's go through that. We set our activities against some sort of time scale. We have a complete list of activities from the work breakdown structure. We can add milestones, these key decision points, uh, milestones in Microsoft Project, an activity of zero duration, often represented by a diamond. We can add our summary bars or work package headings, and we can add our dependency lines. Now, I have to say this is quite a simple example, but um, the dependency lines in a Gantt chart from Microsoft Project can be very confusing to see. We can format our Gantt chart to show the critical path. Usually this is shown in red. The normal tasks, normal means non-critical, shown in blue. And we can indicate the float. Now, you have to actually tell Microsoft Project you want to see the float, but float's a very useful thing to display on your Gantt chart. It shows it by default as a black line. It's useful to see it as something more colourful. You can add resource names and costs or other information onto a Gantt chart. Unfortunately, it's starting to get really complicated now. And your Gantt chart as a communication tool is starting to confuse people rather than communicate what you want. Personally, I feel that Gantt charts are not the best communication method. Now, don't get me wrong, for your project dissertations, when your supervisor says, I want a Gantt chart, he's simply saying, I want 8 to 12 activities showing that you know how long things take and that there's a sequence between them. However, on a real project, there are better project planning tools than the Gantt chart. Our first project planning tool is our project specification, a Word document that describes why we're doing the project and what it is with key information. Our second project planning tool, a work breakdown structure. If you want to discuss with your project team the tasks in the project, then the work breakdown structure is the tool. If you issue them with a Gantt chart, they'll start talking about the costs or the resource allocations or the dependencies or the durations. If you just want to talk about the content of the project, use a work breakdown structure. If you want to talk about who does what, use the responsibility matrix. The costs will be in your cost account. If you want to talk about the sequence of activities, use the dependency chart. It's all it does. It talks about the sequence of activities. No confusion with durations. If you want to look at the critical path and float, the network analysis diagram is perhaps better than the Gantt chart at displaying this. So Gantt charts, my opinion, can have a, a very poor way of communicating a project. Uh, you have a, a project of many tasks. You may find it's difficult to print. You start to sellotape the A4 pages together. Use one of the other project planning tools. If you want to talk about responsibilities, user responsibility matrix. Okay, here's an example of a Gantt chart. Um, this one has over 1,400 tasks in it. And we can see that some of the tasks take uh, months, some of the tasks seem to take days. So perhaps the granularity, the level of detail is not consistent. I used to ask people, uh, professional project managers, you know, how many tasks do you have in your Gantt charts? in Microsoft Project. Uh, and the most I've got is sort of six to 8,000. And I say, I bet you have to employ somebody just to keep this up to date. And the guy looked a bit embarrassed and said, well, actually, I employ two people to keep it up to date. Okay, in summary, this uh, lecture, lecture six, has looked at the second set of project planning tools. 
we understood that work and duration were different things and that the work went into the cost account, but the duration is going to go into our network analysis. We looked at the work contours or work profiles to explain how work could be spread differently throughout the duration. We looked at PERT analysis as a way of using three estimates of duration when we've got uncertainty on a task. We then did a forwards pass and a backwards pass to calculate the critical path. We did a network analysis. We defined what a critical path is. We defined what float is. A task with float is not critical because its latest start time is greater than its earliest start time. We looked at methods of improving the project plan if we're finishing late. We looked at Gantt charts as a way of communicating projects. Uh, and I'm suggesting that actually there might be better ways of communicating than a Gantt chart. However, when you get to industry, you will find large Gantt charts pasted all over the office walls.